So, as I was saying today, I am going to talk about uh, some um, aspects of uh, object orientation, and uh, that will be very important for us to know. It's, it's something that... Uh, uh, we need to make sure that we uh, understand it perfectly. But before doing that, I'm going to bring the last uh, lectures operator overloading with. Uh, oh, that's not yours. <clears throat> That's not yours, this is yours. So we have done lots of uh, operator overloading, going through different types of things that we can do with uh, with num, uh, with, uh, with operator overloading, and uh, gave an example with num. And I see over here there's something used that I did not put over there, not. Operator not. I did not set that, so I can do it. Did I do it? No, so, yeah, Boolean operator not. So that's a unary operator that. It, is, it doesn't have, let me just add it. And the definition for it is what our main is supposed to do over here. It is not zero, is zero. Okay, so. So in here, I'm gonna say not, I'm gonna say if it is zero, it has to return true, right? Uh, if, if not. It is not zero, so it's, it's true if it's not zero. So I'm going to say over here, return uh, m value being not equal to zero. Okay, so <clears throat> we did unary operators, all different types of things. We talked about uh, helper operators and uh, all the uh, things we need to do to make it actually printable. I don't know why it's giving me an error in here. Oh, because it needs two of them. There you go. There is one thing that I need to mention uh, about operators. A any questions about these operator overloads that we have done with num? Any questions? Uh, no? Um, so we had the types of operators we had. We had we said operators could be binary, could be unary. Binary are the ones that have two operands left and right. We have unary operators that has only one, and it has one operand that deals with. Uh, there are constant ones, which means they don't have side effect. They are non-constant and member ones that they have side effect. So we went through all those things, and, and we learned them one by one. Uh, what you don't know is that there are many things that can be overloaded that are kind of operators. For example, um, if I want to, just to show you something in here, if I write something like this, what's going to happen? If I write over, if I write over here, integer b, and if I say, oh, sorry, uh, if I say num a that we have, uh, num has a, a default constructor, I hope. Yes, it does, and it sets it for zero. So if I have num a, and I write over here, um, uh, a is set to num 20. I can do that, right? I'm casting 20 to num. 
ca or casting if you want to do it in C language, like C language syntax, doing something like this. If I cast the 20 to a num, okay? Like if you have a double and you want to cast it to an integer, what do you do? You, you say integer i, then you say i is set to int, although it, it, it does it automatically, but you can do that. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with this statement? We can do the same thing with num. Why? Because C++ brings the casting meaning to the other side of the, uh, moves the parentheses from the type to the thing that is being casted. So instead of doing it like this, it does it like this. It's not just the syntax is changed, it's that the meaning of casting is changed. When, remember I told you you cannot call a constructor? Remember that? Okay, so in here you are not calling the constructor. You are telling to the compiler, I want a temporary nameless num out of 20 to get created. So it uses the 20 to create a num. Can it do it? Yes, because it has a constructor, because it has a constructor that accepts an integer. So an integer can be casted to a num. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay or we are oblivious? <laughs> Which one? Are we okay with this? So when I write over here a is equal to num 20, I'm not calling a constructor. I am casting 20 to a num. And obviously like any casting, after the casting is done, that integer is gone. In here, after the casting is done, that num is gone. That's why when we run the program, we will see that if we have a constructor in here, so I'm just going to create a constructor for num, just to see, and I'm going to just create an empty constructor for it, just to see that we have it and we run through it. So if I actually run this program right now, and go through it step by step, you will see that <clears throat> three years later, when num actually gets created over here, fine, but when it, at this moment, I'm saying a is set to num, it actually goes to the constructor of num, receives a 20, creates a temporary nameless num, now the assignment happens, and after the assignment happens, you see the destructor is being called? If I actually get into the destructor and go into watch and type over here this, you will see that it has an m value of 20, which means the nameless that is created is the one that was created out of 20. And now the line is over, the casting is done, A is set to that temporary nameless, therefore I don't need that num, it dies. That's the meaning of casting in C++, creating a temporary nameless object out of another one. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay? <laughs> are, are either everybody is tired and sleepy like me, or because <laughs> I see it, it's like, oh, too much turkey, I guess. Anyways, so, if you don't know what I mean, it means, I mean, Thanksgiving, turkey, you know. <laughs> ah, turkey. Oh, I forgot we were supposed to have turkey. Okay. All right. So that's that. So this is good. This is all good. But what if I have something like this? What if I have... So if I have an object, if, if I have a class... That class of mine has a one argument constructor. Whatever the type of the argument is, I can cast that type to the type of my class. That's given because the constructor accept an argument, anything in that type can be cast. But what if I do it like this? What if I say integer i And in here, I'm going to put 100. 
I want to say i is equal to int num, int a. What if I want to do that? What if I want to cast the num to an integer? <clears throat> integer is not a class. It doesn't have a constructor, right? That's where overloading comes through. You can overload type conversion, which means you can go to num and tell to num, if anybody wanted to convert me to an integer, so it is an integer, right? So it becomes operator int. So what is the return type of this? It's the int itself, because it's supposed to convert the num to an integer. Therefore, there is no return statement is needed. It is already given that I want to convert this to an integer. Okay? Obviously, I don't want to change anything in my class, so that's going to be my, my type converter. It's called type conversion operator. And if I do this, then I can simply say over here, if somebody wanted to cast me to an integer, return my value out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a type conversion. Okay? Any question? Suggestion? Objection? <laughs> Why? Because I want to give you an example. So essentially, I will have 100 in it. So now if I... So now, now if I say over here, C out A, I, it will have the value I have in num, because that's how I programmed it. When the program runs, in here I'm saying cast the num to an integer. Because int is, does not have the definition of casting the thing, when I actually go in here, it's going to go to the operator, return the value out, and therefore, I will hold the value 100 afterwards, and I'm going to have 100 printed over here like this. Whenever you need to cast an object to a, to a, to a value, to a type, anything, anything, any reason that you have, I don't know, like, I, I could have given you a more sophisticated thing, but we don't need to. Or we're going to go So uh, remember, any time that you think, at, like for example, I have an employee. Employee has an employee numbered as an integer, correct? Oh. An employee has a salary that is double, correct? Oh. So I can define if the employee is casted to an integer, return the employee number. If the employee is casted to a double, return the salary. If the employee is casted to a constant character pointer, return the name. So when you cast an employee to constant character pointer, essentially the name is going to get extracted automatically. We'll see. I'm going to give you examples as we are going through. Okay? So just remember, this is type conversion operator. You need to know it for your workshop five. Because the last time I did the workshop review, I only had two people coming. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not going to waste my time. Okay? I thought people are interested. Those workshop overview that I did and I recorded, first I had like 16 people. The second one became five and the third one became two. I'm not going to do, waste my time. Okay? So anybody else? Like the reason is that you can ask me questions now. I'll explain it to you. Why do I have to go through it and give it to all the other sections when nobody cares? So. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. If you have any questions, you can ask me during your lab time. Or maybe i give you an overview during the lab. <clears throat> Anyways, so that's that. Next thing, we need to do would be this. So I am going to create a add uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. what do I want to do? Um, add um, a new new item. I'm going to add a class. 
uh, a class for name. We've already done this name thingy. I, I don't know if, it, if we did name or not. Anyways, so, and I'm going to cheat and bring it from the other class so I don't have to type too much over here for you. But I'm going to remove the things that I'm supposed to go through. So, I have a class called name. A name has a value, somebody's name that you're holding. Um, yes, a name has a value. It has a constructor with a name that you can set. If you don't set the name, it's going to be null pointer, which is essentially setting the name to a safe empty state. I am creating a display to display it. I am creating read to read it. Two helper functions to be able to print it with C out. Two helper operators to be able to print it with C out. At left side, and we've done it already, so you know how it's done. Okay? So the implementation for it would be and okay, the implementation for it would be Pardon me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll bring it. Somebody need to oil that hinge. Okay. So that's my name. That's the constructor for the name. So I'm essentially getting the name. And if the value is not null, I'm going to copy everything in here. So that's the name. Uh, the next thing I need to have for this one is the destructor, which is right over here. That's correct, right? Yeah. So the destructor, which is going to delete the name when the name is done. And let me just close the STDS so it doesn't give me that error. Uh, finally, I need to be able to display the name. I am displaying the name like that. So if name exists, I'm going to print it. If it doesn't, I'm not just not going to show anything. I need to uh, get, uh, read the name. Uh, what is the longest name that we can have? I actually Googled it. You had it in one of the workshops. Workshop. I know, in workshop. Remember that long name? That, that was like, that actually, I actually Googled, like, what is the long name out there? And Google gave me something. And I use that one. So I presume that was, so we, we know it's not more than 70, but I'm going to put 128. So I'm going to, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, read it like this. These we've already done, so I'm not going to bore you with it. So I'm going to read the name. I'm going to get a local value for 128 uh, characters. First, I'm going to delete the current value because I'm going to read over the name. If it's null, it doesn't care. The null value, delete and null doesn't do anything. Um, and I set it to null pointer. Then I'll try to read it using get line up to 128 characters. If the C in reference, uh, uh, C in didn't fail, and it's all good and nice, then I'm going to do an allocation and copying for it, which is essentially this. So in here, I'm going to say if, because I'm lazy, I'm going to, just copy that one. So if, uh, actually, no, I don't need to do an if even. Do I? No, we are good. So I'm going to say over here, local, whatever it is, local. So if C in doesn't fail, I'm going to do a, a um, what you may call it, a, a, a dynamic memory allocation and copy everything over there. Make sure this is empty. <clears throat> so if it fails right off the bat, it's, it's not going to crash on us. Um, and after this is done, we simply return C in ref. And because I want this thing to be able to be read from the uh, from the uh, 
C in and C out. I'll use the standard C in and C out uh, overload that I always do. And that's something that you need to do it with your eyes closed. Like as soon as I told you, overload this thing to work with C in for uh, extraction and for C out for insertion, immediately you have a display, you have a read, and poof, those two things are the, what you are writing, which is essentially overloading the uh, insertion operator. You are having an O stream reference at left. You have the constant reference of the, funct of the object you want to print at right, and you call the display or print of the right operand returning the value. So this essentially calls the display up there. And whenever you want to, as soon as I tell you, I want extraction from C in, immediately extraction operator, I stream reference type of C in, I stream reference left, non-constant value for right because you're overwriting it, and you call the read of the right operand passing the left I stream to it and returning it out. Therefore, I stream flows through all your functions and passes through. Therefore, it becomes updatable. You have seen that in the files. So you think the overloads you have, the functions you have read for C in and C out, I read files with it. Remember that? We'll understand later when we come to virtual functions to see how that mechanism works. So this essentially looks like something good. I have no problem with it. And if I go to my main over here, if I go to my main over here, I can actually create a name. I don't need num. And I don't need two IO streams. Okay, STDS. Do I need STDS? Yes, because I have name. So include name. Now in here I can say uh, name uh, n. Uh, equals to, say, Fred Soleil. And now I can print the name out. I'm going to see out N. I'm going to say, hello. N, and I'll go to new line. And that is essentially what we have written with dynamic memory allocation and all the good stuff. Are we OK with this? So to walk through it kind of reminds us of how all these dynamic schematic things works. I'm going to go through it like this. So um, I'll show that it works as follows. I'm going to put this one over here, bring this one over here. So <clears throat> uh, what, is assignment at, what is assignment at the moment of creation? What is assignment at the moment of creation? Assignment at the moment of creation, what is it? We mentioned it many times. Assignment at the moment of you. Your face was like a question mark. <laughs> That's why I'm coming. <laughs> Assignment at the moment of creation. One argument, what a 2% first test, OK? A call to a one argument constructor, OK? So assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. Therefore, one argument constructor will be called passing Fred Soleil as value for it. Obviously, value is first initialized to zero because I did it like that, so it becomes zero. And now value is not null. It makes, gets the size, allocates the memory, copies the value into memory, comes out. Therefore, I have uh, uh, the end set up. Now C out happens. C out hello prints hello and then returns C out. Therefore, I'm going to have C out and N, and that calls the operator. The operator at right side, I have at right side, I have Fred Soleil. At left side, I have my C in. Okay? So it goes, calls the display, therefore passes, sorry, C out, passes C out to the display. Receiving it, checking to see if value is not null, prints it out, returns the C out reference. C out reference comes back to the operator overload. From there, it's passed back to the line. Therefore, this will be replaced with C out, which takes care of the end L afterwards and prints the end L out, which is going to new line because of that. Are we okay with that? Are we okay? And then after this is done, because n is going after, out of scope, the destructor of name is called deleting Fred Soleil out of the memory. Therefore, we do not have a memory leak. Everybody's okay with what just happened? Everybody okay one? 
everybody okay too? We are okay. All right, so the next thing over here I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write, create another name over here. What was that? <laughs> okay, I'm going to create another name over here. Let's call it X, and I'm going to call that X man. Okay, so, so I have, now I have the name X over there. That's, that has X man in it, right? Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say hello, and that's Fred Soleil it did. Then I'm going to say uh, N is set to X. Okay? I'm going to set the N to X. And then in here, I'm going to say C out N. And I'm going to say C out X. Running this beautiful program of mine, as soon as I go through this, obviously those two things are created. I don't care. It's going to say hello, Fred Soleil. Then it's going to set N to x man correct? I didn't have any assignment to operate, so because left and right are the exact same object, no casting is needed. Compiler automatically copies all the context of one class, dumps it on the other one, and as a result, as soon as I come over here, print n is x man x is x man life is beautiful, right? Then when I want to exit the program, this happened. Oops. So if I actually wanted to compile this and run it, this would have happened. What the heck just happened? This is what happened. I think the other class is watching a movie or something. Or somebody's watching a movie on the laptop over here. Is it? In? <laughs> <laughs> so let me see if it's fixed. Yes. So I have the class A at top. It has dynamic memory outside of it. So this is Fred Soleil and this is X-Men. Let's put something like that, okay? Is it? Yeah. And then what I do, I assign one to another. So I created two classes with dynamic stuff in them, right? And then I set B is equal to A. So B is going to get overwritten by the values of A. You had dynamic memory allocation. Therefore, the memory that you have are outside of the territory of the class, correct? Of the scope of the class. Compiler is not aware of that. All the compiler will do will, is that blindly it copies the information of one class to another. Therefore, whatever is in M data of A will go to M data of B. Whatever is in M size of A goes to M size of B. Therefore, after this execution, what happens will be this. So, now M data, and they're both pointing to that one. That's bad stuff. First of all, memory leak. But memory leak doesn't cause crash. Memory leak usually is what you, why you're resetting your modem over and over, right? That doesn't crash anything. It just, you know, consumes the memory until you reboot your computer. So what caused the crash is actually this. First, when A goes out because you created the destructor, it wipes out the memory of object A. And now, after that, B is pointing to, now B gets deleted, and that's the destructor class. So whenever your program runs perfectly, and as soon as it end, exits, it says segmentation fault, that means you did not follow rule of three. Out of rule of three, we know one of them. Rule number one, whenever you have a class, <clears throat> that has resources. What does it mean? It means 
The class has some stuff that are outside of his scope. In our knowledge right now, that's dynamic memory allocation. Whenever you take care of the information outside of the scope of the class, you do uh, any type of assignment. Uh, whenever you have your class and you have the data outside of the class, you have to follow the rule of three. Rule number one is to create a destructor. You already know that. Very funny. So <laughs> you create, a, you create a, a destructor. Rule number two, you need to take over the assignment operation. You cannot let the automatic assignment operation of system do it for you because it sucks. Right? You just saw it. So to actually fix that, what I need to do is the following. So when I actually want to do proper assignment, this is what needs to happen. Okay? The very first thing that you do, you take that trash can outside of the thing so we can hear ourselves thinking. All right. All right, so... So when we have something like this, the very first thing we need to do when an assignment happens is I have to take care of that memory leak. So the very first thing, I have to wipe out the data. So all these things is happening in assignment operator. First, I have to, what, <clears throat> who is the owner of the assignment operator here? B. B is the owner. So in the assignment operator of B, you delete this data. So the data will be gone. Now the data is gone. What you do, you check the size of the memory of the other one that you are copying. You, you allocate enough memory to get to be able to hold all the information of the other one. So you're going to say, uh, now in here I have a.m size because that's an array. In the name of ours, we don't need the size because we have null termination, so we can do SDR len. So in our name situation, it's going to be value is equal to new character SDR len of yada plus one, right? So same thing. We allocate enough memory to the size of the other one, and one by one, we copy everything from the other one into this one. Now the assignment is done. We update the size. In main, in name, we don't need to because the size is automatically set with the null termination. I don't have a size. But after this, I have two different classes with the memories of own. The first destructor destroys the first one, this, and, and it's gone. The second destructor destroys the other one, and it's gone, and therefore, no memory leak, and everything gets copied perfectly. Yes? What do you like? Ice cream? You can do it. Car, you can do bus, employee, integer, double, character, anything you want. Are we okay? All right. So, so let's do that. You know what? Let's actually have the slide on and do it step by step with that slide thingy. Okay, so this is our slide, and this is our crashing program. Okay, so. I need to take care of an assignment between two objects of the same type. So rule number number one, <clears throat> rule of three, number one, destructor is done. Rule number two, assignment operator. Operator assignment <clears throat> between me and myself. So I don't want to change the other one, so it's a constant name reference. Uh, that's right operand, correct? And what does it return? Always return this so you can say A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to D and so on and so forth. Next time I'm going to bring an espresso machine in here. Leave me. Anyways, you'll, you'll know now. You'll know why. <laughs> okay, name. So that's going to be the reference of the operator and uh, that's that. So let's do exactly what we wanted to do over there. So. Here's the operator. Let's create it. 
Okay? Number one, I delete the current data. So in here, I'm going to say delete M name. Do I need to M value? Do I need to worry if it's null or not, whatever? No, because I uh, set the default value to be null. It is always in a good state. If it's null, there is nothing there, and so on and so forth. Okay? So after doing this, what do I do? After doing this, after deleting the data, I get the size of the other one. So in here, I'm going to say M value will be set to new character RO dot M value, oh, str len of RO dot M value plus one. Just to uh, have enough memory for it. And, and after that, I'm going to say str copy into M value the value of right operands M value. And at the end, I'm going to say return me. Doing this now, when the program actually runs and tries to set all those good stuff as you see, it gives me error. Why it's giving me error? Oh, because it's already running. Oh, something is running. It is still running? Yes, it's still running. Uh, how do I stop it? Okay. All right, so compile and run it. Bring it over here so we can see it. So <clears throat> now, now uh, the two are created. When assignment happens, it comes over here, says delete Fred Soleil. So the Fred Soleil will be gone. Now it says, what is the size of X man plus one? It's going to get that. Copy it. Return this to cyberspace because nobody's catching it. Now we have both X men. But when it goes out, it deletes the first one and deletes the second one with absolutely no problem and perfectly clean exit. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. <clears throat> Next thing we need to do over here is to make sure that this is a foolproof one, which means what if the, the other one is in a safe empty state? And I don't need to do with any copy, right? If that's the case, if this one is in safe empty state, I have to put myself in a safe empty state. So I'm going to say, if, uh, to check to make sure uh, it happens, I'm going to say, uh, after setting that, set M value to null PTR. So I go to safe empty state, then I'm going to say, if ROs.M value, right operands, M value, exist do the copying otherwise don't do anything okay that takes care of the other one being empty so if i have an empty case it's not going to fail so i can actually do something like this i can create and after this i can say x is set to empty and i can say again c out empty empty and see out x x and obviously nothing's going to happen it's just not going to show anything there you go they are empty <laughs> okay but no crashes everything is good but <clears throat> what if somebody does this what if somebody does name uh, reference R and sets that one to N. So now N has two names, R and N. We're good? R and N. And forgets about it, that he did something like that. So in here, it comes and says, R is set to N. And then tries to print it. So that's R and that's N. So now if I run the program, something strange is happening. 
What happened to RNN? The data vanished. No, there's no crash. It just vanished. What happened to the X-Man that was in N? I didn't do anything with it. Why is it gone? The reason is that when it comes to assignment operator over here, oh, see Daisy. When it comes to assignment operator over here, it doesn't know that the reference that is coming here is identical to this. Therefore, it deletes itself and then tries to copy itself. Can't, right? So <clears throat> we have to make sure that we always take care of the user's stupidity. And sometimes that user is us using the program. So what we do in here, we are saying if the address of me is not equal to the address of the right operand, do all these good operations. Actually, <clears throat> yeah. So this prevents self-copying. Because if address of me and the right operand are the same, no copying will happen. OK? <laughs> so if I actually save it, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to come right to, to, to this one. And, and I'm going to stop right there. So when it comes to, to assign R to itself, because R and R, 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 and R, R, R and N are the same. <laughs> when it comes here, as you see, this has address 6C8, and RO has address 6C8. Because these two are equal, that would be false. No copying will happen. And it, there is no need. If you copy to myself, I'll be the same, right? And therefore, when it comes out, you will see it's still, they are both Empty? When did I make it? Huh? Oh. Yeah, thank you. One more time. <laughs> Stop. One more time. There we go. All right. Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. So that's that. That's what we call copy assignments. So rule number two, if you have a class with resources outside of it, you have to overload, what do we overload? Assignment. And the action of it is called copy assignment. Copy assignment is an assignment that copies an object to itself. Uh, when does the class end? Everybody get out, wash your faces, have a coffee, come back after 10 minutes. I'm going to just run and see if the Starbucks is, is uh, um, a little less busy. 10 minutes, we're going to come back. Continue. Now that we know two rules of rule of three, OK? Let's see uh, about this. So this one is going to be. Um, what, if, what should we call it? I'm going to call it uh, PRG, uh, A dot, uh, um, copy assignment test dot CPP. Okay, so that's that one. So everything's good. Now let's write another program. So instead of saying hello like that, I'm going to actually write a function over here, call it void, if I can type it, Void say hello, but because I didn't listen to Fardad, instead of passing it as a constant name reference, I'm going to just pass it as name, okay? And so I'm going to pass it over here, and in here I'm going to say C out, hello, and I'm going to say over here N, right? Easy breezy. And in here, instead of, oh, I don't need all these, and, and I don't need all these, and in here I'm going to say, Say hello. And I pass the end. Looks very harmless, and everything looks good. When I run the program, I get it. Oh, I did not record. Did I record? Oh, this one is blinking. I think that the battery is going low. But anyways, 
So I have to change the battery of this one. So it crashed, as you see. Why did it crash? This is why. Why did this fail? The reason is this. Bad copying. Why? First of all, be aware that when it's running, how does say hello is called? When you actually call say hello, this is how it's called. Say hello, name, name, n sets to the value that you're passing to. Remember that? I said at any moment a function is called, the value actually initializes the argument. That's how it's called. So when say hello it's called, name n becomes equal to n. What is assignment at the moment of creation? Call to a one argument constructor. What is the type of the argument? Name itself. So it's copying it. But again, because we did not tell how to copy it, compiler does its own copy, which means you have one class, the class wants to get copied, class B is equal to A or something like that. Again, compiler blindly, but this one doesn't have anything over here because data is brand new. It's an object that is just getting created. It's getting copied out of another one. So no memory leak, but no memory leak, but Essentially, when the copying happens, they both point to the same place. When the other one, the copy, is gone, because it's pointing to the va value of the original, it deletes the value of the original. And when the original wants to get deleted, crash happens. So, essentially, what happens over here, what happens over here is this. When say hello is called, the n becomes a copy of the lowercase n over here which is going to point to the data of this one, Fred Soleil. When the function is ending, this capital N will die, taking the data with it, and therefore, everything's going. So we have to actually do the third, follow the third rule, which is creating a copy constructor. So whenever you have classes, with resources outside of its scope, which we call classes with resources, okay? You have to apply rule of three, which means destructor, copy assignment, copy constructor. So how do I do copy constructor? I simply say name, and I pass constant name reference RO to it. And to implement it, it's very simple. I don't need to First of all, no self-checking is needed because it's a brand new copy. It's impossible to be the same object. No, cop no object can copy itself. It's, it's a paradox. You can't do that. You must exist before you copy yourself, therefore. Okay? So that doesn't happen. Um, what else? Uh, do I need to delete anything? No, it's a brand new object. I don't need to delete anything. I don't need to set anything. Everything's fine. All I need to do is the, actually these two lines. That's all and nothing else. So all I need to do is to say, get the size of the other one and copy something and you're done with it. So it's simply, when it's getting created, it measures the size of the other data. It copies the value in it. And after that, we will not have any crashing happen. And the other one crashed and it's, it's dead. See, that's one of the things. Come on. There we go. So now run it one more time. And now it runs. It says hello to Fred Soleil with no crashing and everything is good. So rule of three. What are they? Whenever you have classes with resources outside of its territory, whatever it is, you've got to make sure that you... Uh, implement three things. Destructor, copy assignment, copy constructor. Okay? Destructor, copy assignment, copy constructor. Yes.
So the constructor syntax is obvious. It has it carries the name of the you can put it anywhere, but Pardon me? So this constructor, this name creates a name out of a string. This name creates a name out of an already existing name, hence copying. This operator copies an already existing object. to. It copies two objects, one to, one to another. They are both existing. It's not at the moment of creation. And that's it. Now, for example, Going back to the topic that we had before, conversion operators, okay? If I had in here, let's say, a C string saying, and let me include uh, my utils over here too, include utils. Let's say I have over here character uh, str200, whatever, okay? I want to do this, str copy. Uh, into strn. Can I do something like that? Copy the name into a string? No, you can't. n is a name. What str copy needs is a constant character pointer. So therefore, compiler is trying to cast this to a constant character pointer unsuccessfully. Therefore, it gives me an error. I want to fix that problem. What do I do? I'm going to say over here, if somebody casted me to a constant character pointer, if somebody casted me to a constant character pointer, if somebody casted me to a constant character pointer, return and value, right? So now if I come over here, you will see that, yeah, it should work. Let me run it. Why is it giving me an error? Ambiguous call. Uh, it says ambiguous. I think it's it doesn't know which one. Let's go. There you go. That was the reason because it was getting confused with the SDR copy of the system. Okay. So anyway, so it says hello, Fred Sole, and the other one got copied. So so I can actually say over here something like. Uh, and I can even do, even do something else. For example, if somebody wants to, so I want to, I want to do this. I want to say, um, see out n contains str with length of str. And in here, I want to say with with length. length of, let's say I want to see what is the length of the name. I want to do int n. So I would say if somebody casts my name to an integer, it means they want to know how long, how many characters the name is. Just something to came up with it right. So I'm going to say over here, if somebody casts me to an integer, operator int const, What I'm going to return will be stds return stds strlen of and value. Right? So if somebody casts the, the name to an integer, what's going to come out is the length. If they cast it to a constant character pointer, that's what's going to happen, and, and so on and so forth.
n contains first array with length of 10. Right? And that's uh, classes with uh, resources. Now, we have, um, how many sessions we have? We have one lab that you're going to have. It's on Monday, right? So you have your midterm on Monday. Okay? Midterm you have on Monday. That's a week. That's, that's, that's a week before study break, right? Next week, yeah. Next week. Yeah. So then, yes. We can't. Because Wednesday is not a lab. I need computers. What are we doing? Hmm? What are we doing Wednesday? Studying more stuff. <laughs> We're going to work on files and stuff, yeah. Yeah. And that the material is on first five weeks. It's not week six, so there is nothing about week. It's not on paper. It's on a computer. It's, you have an hour and a half to do it. We're going to ask about history of Canada. Pierre Elliott Trudeau. We're going <laughs> C++, anything from IPC 144 till end of week five. Okay, so uh, let me just, uh, let, me, let me save these. And I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to actually, let me just show you. So there are a few things uh, that I'm going to explain. What, let me just uh, save all that to so make sure that we're not going to. And uh, commit it right now. So I'm going to go commit. Uh, all. So about midterm. About midterm. <clears throat> uh, midterm, you're going to have multiple, for concept stuff, you're going to have multiple choice and fill in the blanks type of things. That's uh, for concept questions. For uh, walkthroughs, you are going to have for walkthroughs, you are going to have uh, uh, fill in the blank, which is essentially um, um, me giving you a program and tell you what is the exact output of this program. And it's going to generate like five characters. You're going to write those four or five characters and fill in the blank. Exact. Okay? Exactly like that one. If it generates two lines, I'm going to give you two blanks to fill. Okay? Um, that's going to be the. That's going to be the walkthrough. Um, debugging questions or walkthroughs. I may give you debugging questions saying, what's wrong with this code? You're free to copy the code into, I'm going to actually make the code act copyable so you can copy it into Visual Studio and see what's wrong with it. But if you copy the error message of any compiler and paste it, automatically the full mark becomes zero. You have to give me your interpretation of what that error is. So it's gonna, if it's going to tell you, for example, it's going to tell you, um, I don't know, no pointer assignment, something like that. You cannot give me no pointer assignment. You have, to, you have to tell me this pointer was set to no, and then afterwards you have to explain to me what's going on. Any error message that it gives you, you have to tell me what it is from, uh, you interpret it to tell me what is the error message. Do not copy and paste error messages from compilers. That's, that's, so you see what compiler gives you, and you give me that. Uh, you got to have code snippets to write, which essentially I may tell you, for example, uh, allocate uh, 50 integers and then delete them. So it's a code snippet. You just write allocating 50 integers, so you write integer pointer p is equal to int 50, and then you say delete square bracket. You write two lines. That's it. Or I'll give you a class, and I'm going to say overload the assignment operator. Copy assignment. Overload this, that. So things like that. OK? Um, programs as whole. Um, I, functions is the most thing. I'm not going to ask you to write a whole program. 
you are doing that in workshops, hopefully by yourself, and you're going to do that in the project. So the project that you're going to start doing, uh, that is going to come out uh, on, at study break, that's a huge application with five milestones. Milestone one, two, three, four, to complete the engine, and then milestone five to put it together and becomes an application, a working application that does something. So, uh, uh, so that's that. And I try to make it as small as possible to be able to be done in, in an hour and a half. If you are a student with accommodation and you need uh, this to be done in another environment or whatever, you have to send me an email. All these things I'm going to send you on an announcement. So, uh, uh, mm -hmm. mock-up test, uh, dry run test. I'll give you a dry run test, which works like this. To teach you to, to, to experiment and see how uh, to uh, submit code on, in Blackboard. Okay, the code that you are writing. So um, it is being recording right now. So if if you are watching this, this is a must, and you cannot uh, uh, you cannot uh, not do this. This is this is how the codes are supposed to be submitted. So I create a, ter a, a, a test, and I call it dry run test. Dry run test when you will do it. This is gonna this is how it's gonna look like. Okay, so this is a dry run test. Oh, that's not, is it a dry run that I ran? No, that's the myth. <laughs> okay. <coughs> dry run test. <laughs> so this is a dry run test. Okay, so the dry run test comes up like this. To, so you can actually experiment how to do it. And I actually, uh, so you, still, you begin the test, and I think I actually give the code to you over here. And I, no, it's, it gives you that. But anyways, so say this is my, this is the, and you're going to open Visual Studio and do your work on it. Okay? So you open Visual Studio. You open Visual Studio. And you do your code in it three years later. So this is the code that you want to submit to me. You copy it, right? Then you come to your answer over here. You select insert code. You select C++. You paste it. And you submit it. And the result is going to be... The result is going to be this. Anything other than this, I will not mark. Yes. You'll find out. So if you do it just directly from the notepad or whatever you are having. No, with notepad, it's going to be the same. If you write it in notepad, this is going to syntax highlight it. Yeah, it, it makes it nice. But <clears throat> if I receive something like this, and it's not only that. If your code is this. Uh, So say, I'm just going to, so if your code is like this, all those who get copies from copies from copies from copies, if you submit something like this, your mark is zero. I'm not going to mark this. Okay, if you give something like this, the mark is zero. It means you copied from somebody who copied from somebody who copied from somebody who copied from somebody else. Okay, <clears throat> I see something like I'm not going to even mark it. It has to be all, you are doing it on a computer. Okay, I don't care if it's wrong. If you put a semicolon over there, that means something, you get marks for it. I give partial marks to everything. Two cases, I do not give partial marks. So you write a loop, an integer over there, you get marked for it. Okay? Anything you write, you get marks for it. The only, yeah, you, you write, if you write a proper include, that include gains you mark. I promise. Okay? 
But, but, if I ask you, but if I ask you to give me a class, write a class about a student. So I, I may get, tell you, write a class with no functions, just prototype. I don't want, so I'm going to say write a class for a student that has a name and prints the, G, returns the GPA and re returns the number of subjects, whatever. So you write characters, you just write the prototype for the class, but instead of writing student, you write employee, zero. If your answer does not exactly relate to what I asked, even if it's the best code ever written in the world, the mark is zero. If I ask you to create a constructor for this object, you create a perfect assignment operator for that thing, you get zero. So don't copy and paste and say, let me see if I get it half a mark. Just copy, dump this thing from that workshop, that website, and see what's going to come up. Okay? It has to exactly answer the question. Like that, every single dot you put over there will gain you marks. You'll see. Okay? But don't do random copying. Okay? All I'm asking is to honestly answer questions. That's all. Okay? So, and if you do it on anything, nothing like this ever happens. No copying from any editor, notepad, anything causes something like this. It only happens when you copy from a website, a text message through a web thingy, because over there in cascading studies, it put BR 50 different characters that doesn't mean anything, and it translates it into, when you do something like that, pass information from computer to computer, this happens. Good luck wiping it out. I tried to write programs to fix it, I couldn't, okay? So what you write, what I want from you is this, and it's very easy, I'm not asking anything. Just click over here, select C++, copy and paste, and I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> or you can do this, no problem. Keep deleting one by one, and see if you have enough time to do that, okay? All right, so say uh, if you, let's say I'm just going to do this uh, just to show you. I'm going to go to here, your notes, and whatever. I'm going to go over here and say I... There you go. This is Notepad, right? You simply copy from Notepad, copy from Notepad, and you paste it, and you save it. And again, as you see, everything comes out perfect. No problem. Okay? And when you save and submit, you will see the result. When you save and submit, in this dry run. You can do this multiple times. This, if you see this, it means I'm going to see that. This is what I'm going to see. This is what I'm going to mark. Okay? That's all I'm asking. When you're submitting code, if it's code snippets or anything like that, please be organized. That's all. Okay? Nothing else is needed. Are we good? Okay, so the answers be relevant. That's all I ask. Partial marks for everything other than com automatic uh, uh, things that we have, like fill in the blanks and stuff that it gets marked. Even those, when the, you get the results, take a look. If the answer you gave is v like very close, like you, you misspelled encapsulation and you didn't get the mark for it, you contact me, I'll take a look at it, I'll give you the mark for it manually, there's no problem. So even if you, with all the multiple choices and things like that, and I may make a mistake and uh, set the wrong message or with the wrong mark over there, so make sure you check to, 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 sh to make sure that the marks you're getting is fair. Anything that is unfair, I promise you're going to get the mark for it. No problem, okay? And you probably you already asked other students, I'm very easy marker when it comes to tests. When it comes to project, I'll put you on the microscope. And people fail in my class because of the project. Okay? Yes. Uh, 
No, I create like five different versions and randomly it gives it. So, so one of you is doing assignment, the other one is doing copy constructed, the other one is doing... Pardon me? You can cite. It's, you, uh, I don't care if you get, you, two of you are sitting doing it together. If it's identical, it's cheating. But if each of you is just doing the thing that is, it is in the brain and understand what you're doing, and then you can defend your project, because you're going to defend your project at the end. When you do something, I want to ask you to explain what, how this part of the code works and how that's part. If I see you wrote something that's a little crazy, I'm going to ask you what you have done. If you don't know what you do, your project goes zero. So you have to know what your code do. And don't worry. It's not that I'm going to ask you. It's not that I'm going to ask you, tell me what it is. Now, you have five seconds. No, I'll tell you, tell me what it is. I'll give you five minutes. I'm going to go have coffee. You walk through your code, remember what you have done, and then you're good. OK? Pardon me? Yes, individual. But again, if even part of parts of your project don't work, you can get it from your friend and cite it. And you get 90% instead of 100. Not everybody has to get 100 in a project. It's not as easy. Remember, if you get 80 plus, you are still an A. We have a very easy system of marking in Canada. 80. 80 plus is an A. It means you can make 20% of your work is mistake and you still get an A. Just imagine. That doesn't happen in workplace. 20% of your work, you're out of the door. OK? so. Anyways, any other, any questions about midterm? Yes. Oh yeah, it's open internet, open anything. Huh? Pardon me? Of course, but multiple choice has time of its own. So if it's, okay. So when we are doing, so your test is going to be like, of course, multiple choice is not going to be included in an hour and a half. If I give you five multiple choices, you have seven minutes to do it. Sure, go for seven minutes, browse the internet, and try to find out the answer. By the time you find the answer, the time's up. Okay? So, so the multiple choice parts has its time of its own, and then the programming part has a time of its own. It's not collectively as the same. Yeah. So I open one by one. I say, I'm manual, I'm going to open. It's not going to be timed. Manual, I'm going to say, start, open it. Now I open. You have 10 minutes, and I'm going to close. Poof, done. Anything after that? OK? Guys, it's, it's exactly like on paper, but it's on a computer. I don't want to get paper cuts. That's all. Yes? Mm -hmm. I know. They are doing it on paper. I don't know. Go ask the prof. Sure. Each prof have its own taste. I, my questions, my questions. It doesn't matter if you have the book or not. If you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to be able to do it. Right? I'm going to ask you some random thing. And, oh, by the way, how do I design my... Let me pause the request. Stop the recording.